There is a link between your acid reflux and high blood pressure. Hi, I'm Dr. Vicki Peterson. I've been asked to do a video on what's called refractory blood pressure. So that means when someone's actually on five or more medications and their blood pressure is still out of control. And I was asked to, to talk about the association between acid reflux and high blood pressure, especially this refractory type, which is that it can't be gotten under control even with medications and Obviously, that means there's another root cause. So uh, I found an interesting study. It was from 2018. It was in the Journal of Clinical Gastroenterology, and they actually entitled it The Role of Reflux in Provoking High Blood Pressure. So what they found was that there was absolutely a significant correlation between elevated blood pressure and acid reflux. And it totally makes sense because if you look at anatomy, just below your diaphragm. So if your, your rib cage on the left is where your stomach is, and as you know, your heart is on the left as well, and there's not really much separating them. You've got the, you've got the stomach, you've got the diaphragm, and then you've got the heart right above it. So what happens with acid reflux is that the stomach gets compressed, and that pressure, when as it presses upward, because it's gotta go upwards because it's tethered to your mouth from your esophagus, so as it gets compressed, it pushes on the diaphragm. And as the diaphragm goes up, it pushes on the heart. So they're absolutely related, and that's why sometimes people with hiatal hernia syndrome, that's what the title of the book that I wrote, with this syndrome, what happens is that people feel after they eat, when their stomach's a bit full, that they can get heart palpitations. They feel heart palpitations at night. Actually, I just got off the phone with a gentleman, and this is ruining his life. Um, He's a young man and he's so desperate about the fact that he, his sleep is so interrupted at night because his heart just goes crazy as far as heart palpitations is concerned. Now, um, there is heart palpitations, there is elevated blood pressure. You can have heart pal palpitations without elevated blood pressure. Today, we're talking about particularly high blood pressure associated with this acid reflux but the way it happens is that the pressure increases. The pressure increases what actually starts the whole stomach compression, pressure from below in your gut. A lot of times people have constipation, sometimes they have diarrhea, but they've had a long history of GI upset. And a lot of times people don't even know that, that it's not normal to move their bowels every day, or it's not normal to completely evacuate, or it's not normal to have gas and bloating or just be uncomfortable all the time. Sometimes people have been like that since childhood. This particular gentleman I'm talking uh, about talked about the fact that as a young kid, he used to just bend over and press his elbows very hard into his abdomen to try to get his bowels to move. And, and that's just what he did. That's what he figured out as a young kid. So these, so, so often we're stuck with this you know, well, this is just me, you know, this is who I am, and, and it's absolutely not normal. And, and this pressure from below, this, the gut being out of balance, you know, then gets that pressure up to the stomach, which is a bag. So the stomach's a bag, so it can be absolutely influenced by pressure, and it can, you can feel the acid reflux. Sometimes you have silent reflux, so you can't feel it at all, but you start to feel it in the shortness of breath, the heart palpitations, again, or the elevated blood pressure. So in this particular study, what they found was that if they gave an antacid to these patients that they were having less nocturnal at night episodes of elevated blood pressure. So, okay, that's fine, but before you run out and get more antacids or decide you're just gonna stay on yours to help with your high blood pressure, it's very important to know that um, PPIs, proton pump inhibitors or antacids, have only been approved for two weeks at a time by the Food and Drug Administration. Yet, I run into people who have been on them not only for months, but years and literally decades. And this is unsafe. So what we know about long-term use of PPIs is it actually causes elevated blood pressure. So I know that's some circuitous logic there, but we absolutely know that association. So it's, it's all about, it's, it's not about diminishing the acid in the stomach. Remember that the stomach's supposed to be a bag of acid. That's its job. So it's not about getting on an antacid and diminishing 
the important acid that's in your stomach. It's about finding out the root cause. Why is that stomach being compressed such that it's um, being elevated, it's moving its acid upward and creating this reflux, but also remember it's moving the diaphragm up, which is putting pressure on the heart and can increase blood pressure and or cause heart palpitations. So that's why we name our clinic root cause because that's how we think always. It's not, I mean, as soon as you, as soon as you get the idea and appreciate the fact that normally the stomach's a bag of acid, it's a bag of acid for a very good reason because it's the beginning of digestion. When you diminish the acid content of your stomach, you're setting yourself up for malabsorption and maldigestion. You're setting yourself up for infections because that bag of acid is designed that way so it'll kill organisms as you swallow them in the foods you eat. Okay, that's one of the reasons, plus absorbing your nutrition. It sets you up for osteoporosis or brittle bones because you're not absorbing. It sets you up for kidney disease. It sets you up for a gallbladder that doesn't function well. We've already mentioned the high blood pressure it sets you up for and stroke. It sets you up for erectile dysfunction, male and female. That's a very long list of why you should not be on a PPI, a proton pump inhibitor antacid drug. So, oh, there's a question. Um, apple cider vinegar. Uh, Yes, apple cider vinegar can help. We really like to get to the deeper root cause, certainly much better than a PPI for sure. Um, but we want to get to that deeper root cause of, of why the stomach is not producing enough acid, if, if that's what we're talking about, or um, ameliorating the feeling of excess acid. And it is true, it's very counterintuitive, but it is true that you can have insufficient acid yet still have reflux. So I've talked about that on other videos, but that's true as well. But in this particular video, I really wanted to talk about the high blood pressure and the fact that you can be caught in this catch-22 of thinking, well, let me just settle down the stomach to settle down my heart. But you don't want to do it via an antacid because in the long term, it's going to aggravate your heart plus all the other organs we just reviewed. So it's really about um, an, the change of anatomy and the geography, if you will, of our organs. So the heart is supposed to have its place in the upper left, diaphragm below it, nice and comfortably, comfortably below that, your stomach. Everybody's supposed to have their own place to reside. And when all of a sudden the stomach's coming up on the diaphragm and the diaphragm's coming up on the heart, then you have issues that need to be addressed. But it's not about medication, it's again about getting to the root cause. So um, I hope that makes sense. I've been asked to talk about uh, the refractory high blood pressure and how it could be related to the stomach and it absolutely can be proven in this study and there are so many people on high blood pressure medications but there's so many people on multiple numbers of high blood pressure medication and it's still not under control. There's always a reason, always a reason why we have these symptoms. So if you're willing to dig deep and look, we're willing to help you. That's what we're here for. And um, I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. We want more people to be able to hear this information and I'll see you tomorrow.